Nigeria's heartland. A unique landscape shaped millions of years ago by earthquakes and volcanic activity. This is Plateau State. A place of many encounters. Savannah grassland meets rocky high plateau. Nigeria's Muslim north meets the Christian south. A melting pot of various ethnic groups speaking more than 40 different languages. This mixture of culture and people is linked to Plato's past as a center for mining. Great deposits of tin and other valuable minerals attracted people from all over the country. Industrialized tin exploration started at the beginning of the 20th century. The city of Jos, today's state capital, was founded in the year 1915 as a tin mining hub. Apart from mining, which sharply declined after the 1980s, agriculture is the main economic activity of the plateau. The highland climate provides great conditions for farming as well as rich feeding ground for cattle. Sedentary farmers live side by side with an originally nomadic group of cattle herders, the Fulani. Differences between the two groups always existed, but still they live together in peace, exchanging goods and enriching each other's lives. This changed after the year 2001. Political disagreements between Christians and the Muslim Hausa population triggered a bloody conflict. At first, it was not connected to the issue of farmers and herders, but as the Fulani are mostly Muslim and the farmers Christian, the conflict spilled over. A vicious circle of assaults and revenge attacks claimed thousands of lives and left many villages in ruins. The crisis led to a decline of the economy and gave Plateau the reputation of a conflict region. Within the last few years, the conflict faded. Liveliness returned to the streets and markets. But the root causes of the conflict are still alive. Apart from the disputes over land, politics and religion, stability in Plateau strongly depends on the economy. As long as scores of unemployed youth roam the streets and opportunities for a better future remain dim, the conflict can return at any time. But there are people working hard for a new beginning. Strong alliances are forming. Technology and inventions make life easier. Business ideas create opportunities and move the economy forward. Meet people who are making a difference. People taking initiative and bringing change. You will see that Plateau is on the move and we want to invite you to join in. The person you are going to meet is Mr. Isaac Boa from Bokos. Let me confirm how good it is for us to, to pass. This is a mini farmer's bridge. We are welcome to the farm. This is the, the potato farm now. Irish potato, not a common crop in West Africa, but in the plateau it is one of the major farm products. About 90% of Nigeria's potatoes are harvested here. The good news for farmers, the demand within Nigeria's rapidly growing population is on the rise. Potato production is a great business opportunity. Isaac has been in the trade for all his life. In fact, I don't enjoy it if I spend a week without coming to the farm. Despite his passion and experience, the productivity of his farm remains comparably low. 
A Nigerian potato farmer averagely harvests 10 times less on the same space of land compared to his counterpart from South Africa. We are still using the crude tools and uh, we have another problem. The issue of uh, land fragmentation here. The next farm is, is my neighbor's farm. It's, just, it's not up to 10 meters here and I can't go there because it's his own farm. And then the same thing when you look to the north, if I'm bringing in machine, I will have problem of turning because there are other people's farm and I can't match their farm. Related to small and fragmented plots, many farmers do not apply crop rotation. Potatoes are grown on the same piece of land over and over again. And the problem starts already with the types of seedlings used for planting. When I started under my parents, we had some old varieties. The yield have been very low. At times, you get uh, less than three tons from a hectare. Many farmers still use these old varieties. Isaac is among the first who started planting new types of potatoes. With the incoming of the new varieties like the Marabel, in fact, there are some people that can even get up to 20 tons from a hectare. The Marabel potato introduced from Germany and other new varieties mature faster, grow to bigger sizes, give better yields and are more disease resistant. Especially disease resistance is a much needed advantage. When we get here, you'll be able to see what I was telling you. As you see the leaves, they, they have all shattered. This is the problem of the, the blight. So, and I think it is all over. The potato late blight raged over the entire state. Losses in 2016 are estimated at several billions of Naira. To avoid similar losses in coming years, farmers need to invest into disease resistant seedlings and other improved farming practices. One challenge for many farmers is how to get the money for these investments in the first place. Another challenge is the need to move away from old habits. Isaac is among the first ready to take this step. He began to look at farming as a business and not just a way to survive. Once you don't keep record, you are just like a man moving without bearing. And you don't even know why you are spending and of what value you are spending. To understand the real value of his spending, Isaac analyzes his income and expenditure. Success in business depends on whether income is greater than expenditure. For a farmer, income is determined by the amount of money he gets for his farm produce. The expenditure side is more complex. Seeds, fertilizer, fungicides, labor costs and a lot of other things go into it. Traditionally, farmers in the plateau try to keep their expenditures as low as possible. Even if they don't sell much and for a low price, they still hope to get a bit more than what they have spent. A business-minded farmer, on the other hand, risks more and invests into new seedlings, fertilizer, and methods to prevent disease infestation. He needs more knowledge. He will work more and spend more money. But if he does it right, he can plenty fold his returns. Isaac's family is helping out in the business. His daughter, Gloria, is studying theater arts at the University of Jos. She only comes to the farm when there are no lectures. It's from this that they pay my fees somehow. So we have to do it. The following weekend, Isaac and other neighboring farmers meet to wash the best crops of their recent harvest. These potatoes are prepared for delivery to ShopRite, a big supermarket chain with outlets all over the continent. Because of the new varieties, farmers in Bokos are for the first time able to meet the quality expectation of the retailer. This is what we have been farming before, but this is the one we are using now. The new variety that they have come, this one we can export it, but look at this. Look at, look at the local one. Are you comparing it? It has a difference. Great difference. To understand more about the deal with ShopRite, we travel to Pengshin. Mr. Emmanuel Shipi, chairman of the association who closed the deal with the supermarket. Generally, when you take your potato after harvest, take it to the most of these uh, local markets close by, 
they determine, the middlemen determine the price for the farmers. And farmers run at loss in most cases. So we felt farmers are not encouraged at all. Rather, they are cheated. The farmers around Mr. Shippy were looking at how to avoid the middlemen and get into direct contact with off-takers. They approached ShopRite and learned the first thing they needed to do was to formalize their business. Here comes the document, which is the certificate. You can see it clearly, issued by the Corporate Affairs Commission and the name. Solanum potato and vegetable. Solanum is a botanical name for Irish potato. The association registered with the Corporate Affairs Commission as a limited liability company. This was their entry ticket to a new level of business. Today, farmers are really appreciating potato production because ShopRite buys it at an appreciable price. As members of the Solanum Potato Association, Isaac and the other men in Bokos are beneficiaries of the deal. <laughs> they are loading the washed potatoes into a newly constructed storage facility. When there is too much harvest in the market, you know you can now store your wire to, uh, potato here for a very long time until when the price appreciates in the market, then you take it out. In peak season, Potatoes lose more than half of their value. Farmers who can't store are often forced to sell at prices below the production cost. The facility is constructed with compressed, stabilized earth bricks. The bricks keep a constant temperature in the inside, allowing a storage period of up to six months. In Riom, we learn more about construction and advantages of the earth bricks. The trip takes us to one of the communities worst hit by the conflict between farmers and herders. These men have just completed a training in earth brick making. Now they are using their skills to rebuild their home communities. First, they have to identify the appropriate type of laterite to be used as the base for the earth blocks. The laterite is then sieved to clean it from unwanted particles. Cement is added for stabilization. This machine compresses the earth blocks. The major thing is that it is compressed, so the blocks become harder, stronger than these ones. Availability of raw material and low production costs make these blocks a great alternative to conventional building materials. We are trying to see how we take advantage of this and, and um, establish a little company that you produce and people come and buy. The blocks have to dry for 21 days before they can be used. The city of Jos. Isaac, the potato farmer from Bokos, takes part in a function organized by the BDC network. The full name of BDC is Business Development Committee. What principally we do is to work towards promoting a business enabling environment. As part of their activities, the BDC network establishes dialogues between the private and the public sector. For today's meeting, Mr. Joe Adulugba from the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC, is invited. As an exporter, the first thing you, you will be told is that um, the documents, your documents or your documentation is even more important than the goods that you are going to send out of the country. It is a strong way to put it, but proper documentation is fundamental in the world of serious business. The basic thing is that, first of all, you have to register with, um, with the CAC, that is the Corporate Affairs Commission. At the Corporate Affairs Commission, the business gets a legal status. Most likely, it will be registered as a limited liability company. This company then registers with the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC. Here, the business receives the actual export certificate. The nature of the product determines the next step. Potato, for example, is an agricultural product. It needs to be certified by the National Quarantine Service, NQS. 
Manufactured goods need a certification from the Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, and processed food needs an AFDAC registration. These registrations mean to ensure that export goods meet the required quality standards. If the product passes this stage, it is free to enter international markets. The Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, offers beneficial trade conditions. Potatoes and all other agricultural products enter duty-free into the 15 ECOWAS countries, meaning there is no need to pay tariff for the goods to cross the border. Another key aspect discussed in the meeting is the need to get organized. We are not organized, we are not documented, we are not serious. You as an individual cannot even farm for export. You can't farm for export. Isaac agrees. Export is not just something that you wake up overnight and say, I want to export. We need to do a networking with our farmers in the grassroots or in with our business sectors to polish and put some things aright before we now talk of going to export. Networking is what the Business Development Committee is all about. But for Mr. Bewa, chairman of the BDC Network, it is important that the organization goes a step further beyond the level of individual trade unions and business sectors. The relationship between the BDC, the private sector, and the government is very key in bringing the design reforms, which the ultimate objective is to create an enabling business environment for these businesses to succeed. Let's have a closer look at the BDC Network. The business environment in Plateau State is shaped by political decisions taken in the state government and in the various local governments. Those ones actually doing business are hardly ever asked about their views on these decisions. One farmer or one market woman alone have little chance to make their voices heard. That is why it is crucial for every business person to get organized. First, with peers in the same area, then as a trade union at the local government level. Every functioning trade union is invited to send representatives to the Business Development Committee. The more unions join, the stronger the development committee becomes. Great representation across different trades allow the BDC to speak head-to-head -head with the local government. To extend influence to the state level, all BDCs in the 17 LGAs of Plateau State elect representatives for the BDC network. By unifying a wide range of organized trades, the BDC network gives a strong voice to the entire business community of the state. Many issues such as taxes or infrastructure projects are not just in the interest of one, but of all businesses. Through the BDC network, these issues can be effectively communicated to the state government. The foundation of the BDC network is based on well-organized unions in all business sectors. To achieve this kind of organization at the grassroots, it needs the right people to take initiative. Let's move. My darling. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, are you? Fine. Say no. But you can go my assignment in Achikin Kasuba. So you see how the road is? It's not motorable. So women find it difficult to bring in their goods during the rainy season. Madam Florence is the women leader of the Market Traders Association on Kugia Market in Just South. This market is just temporarily, we are just managing as you can see, see all the road. It's not good. We have market women organization where women voice out their mind to the government, to the BDC, that is the Business Development Committee, uh -huh. and also how we will be able to come together and make the market one as market women. So that is the aim of the organization. Okay. Thank you. It is good. Thank you very much. United we stand. Divided we form. When we are in unity like this, they, 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 we can speak to the government, they can, we can cry to them, they can hear us. Madam Florence also participated in an entrepreneurship training for BDC members. It helps us to keep records, the expenses and the income. Formally, we normally do the business just like that. When you just buy, all you know is your gain. You didn't talk about the transportation. You didn't talk about the stress. All we know is maybe I bought something of 1,000, I got 200, I was happy. So by the time we went to this training, you know that that 200 Naira is not enough to be a gain. So now that I have had it, I'm not the only one going to benefit from it but the rest of the women in the market. Because when you train a woman, you train a nation. Yeah, 
Okay, do the Gona. Gona, dear, pay Wahala. Okay, God, and call him my dear, dear Zamu Mora for this year, too. I have ya, come at them, call him. So then call him my be in the way I sped, but I said, then Taiki. To Yazim, you could be in the Ponsanche, while we're putting young, young Gona key, Massim Gona. I come on, I'm registered as soon. To mana ba ku shawara yau ku je ku register da su domin ta wannan gurin ne shine za a iya magance masallan da kuke da shi amma kun zauna ku kadai haka sai dai ku yi ta shan wahala ko ya kuka gani Mr Shipi chairman of the Solanum Potato Association is already aware of these problems Fertilizers are becoming out of the reach of the common farmer today the the price has almost doubled To address the problem at state level Shipi meets Mr. Bewa, the BDC chairman and one of the network members at the Ministry of Agriculture. Taking up his responsibility as the head of the business network, Mr. Bewa arranged a meeting with the State Director for Agri Services, Mrs. Helen Gotu. We are here today to discuss on some key constraining issues, particularly as it regards uh, farmers. And that is the reason the chairman of the Potato Farmers is here with us. And then the first that I would, have, I would love, we talked about it, this problem of uh, farmers not getting the fertilizer timely. So we're here to really inquire and see uh, the effort of the ministry as regards uh, that issue, which is very critical to our farmers. Mrs. Gotu is aware of the problem. The ministry has even started registering all farmers in the state to be in a better position to meet the high demand for fertilizer. We wanted to go in for 100,000 mm, farmers. farmers on the plateau, not knowing that everybody on the plateau <laughs> is a farmer. <laughs> the registration is on. Our farmers should just be patient. Every farmer will get fertilizer. We're, we're glad I'm to assured mm. that. Mm. Yes. Mr. Shipi is grateful for this face-to-face -face dialogue at the Agric Ministry. It's a, a privilege for us, from a, a representative of the farmers, to let them know of certain things I, from their responses that they've never uh, you know, appreciated it from that magnitude. Mr. Bewa knows that this kind of dialogue is important, but only one step in a constant process. In the course of our discussions uh, with the ministry staff, we've been taking note of every bit of discussions we made with them. Uh, is that will be uh, a way that we will now do the follow-up to see that all that we agreed on uh, is implemented to it later. So it's part of our own uh, continued uh, advocacy work uh, to see that uh, we put pressure on them, lobby them, uh, to see that these things are done to the benefit of our own uh, farmers. In Bokos, every first Sunday of the month, Isaac's Farm Group is holding its meeting. The name of my group is Food High Tri for Multipurpose Cooperative Society, Kunet Bara. It means coming together will bring development or growth. The group was among the very first in Plateau State who planted the new potato variety, Marabel. If we had not come as a group, we would have not been able to afford 75,000 Naira uh, at that particular time, but because we have the seven, we dashed to our bank and picked that money immediately and collected the, the potato. It was something like a gift. Nobody in this group would say he have not gained. The group receives a visit from Mr. Jidona, a representative of Mugavul Microfinance Bank. There has been a misunderstanding. The group was asked to start repayments on a loan before they could even harvest and make the money. The farmers try to meet the bank's demand, even though they feel treated unfairly. 
This type of disagreement shows that for microfinance to work successfully, the bank must understand the trade of its clients. Mr. Jidona learned his lesson. For the next loan repayment plan he negotiates with any farm group, he will first need to look at their harvesting schedule. Apart from that, he must also ensure that his clients properly understand their loan conditions before signing, especially when it comes to when and how much they need to pay back. The meeting moves on to the next topic about the delivery of high-quality potatoes to ShopRite. <laughs> Not all members are equal in strength, but the ambitions of the entire group are high. The group is trying to acquire machinery to process their potatoes into chips and flour. There has been a one uh, slogan in Plateau that uh, Plateau is an agrarian state and uh, it's, a, it's only farmers, there is no cottage industry, there is no this and that. We want to at least change that system. To build the processing plant, the farmers are going to need another loan. So Isaac is keen to present the group's positive financial records. We'll be running over 50-something thousand uh, per each person. Uh, that's very good. Mm. Daddy, daddy, so say. Mm. Don't when the organization, when the NSA, you can say the record. Go back, go back. Now I can record, you know, when I keep in document, now you can get the kill, so say. When someone has one meeting now, go. Don't you have a shower, you can go, 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 you can go. The relationship between bank and farmers has grown over the years. In the earlier sense, I thought when it is going to be a shame for me to go to bank with 100 naira that I'm going to deposit, and when I have 5,000, 10,000. But when we are interacting, they say, no, banking is not like that. Even if you sell firewood 50 naira, go and save. They are almost coming to us on a monthly or weekly basis, even coming to visit us on our farms to know what we are doing and to advise us from the financial aspect. In fact, it's more of a friend, friendship or friendly relationship. The next day, Mr. Jidona is back in his office. I have called him. Are you calling or not here? I am the head of customer meeting point here in Bogos Mobile Microfinance Bank. You know, microfinance bank is the dirty door service. If you can stay in your office, nobody will come. The essence of the microfinance bank is you, to move out. You don't, we don't stay in the office. Even the rent is more than this one, it can't stop me from visiting my customers. Today is uh, my catacomb market. Definitely, I will be here throughout. Mekatako is one of the big markets in Bokos. And the major trade place for potatoes in the entire state. Mr. Jidona is out to do his job. This is our logo. And this is our can opening for. Mobile Microfinance Bank. And establish Domu Tamike Wanda Sun Karfisu Yakasa to empower the people living at the grassroots, like you and me. We are the people at the grassroots. The era, Nasa Kudia Girayar Gayawuche. You don't kind of Kudia Kajaka quantity. Kudia Nanyana Maganava. Eh? Canada Kudia Aljuhu. You don't get a good go. Could you say, Jim, make a week of it? Eh? 
kapita kapita seka seka kena haka kau eh kau bahaga bawa mama puri yang nama kena ya wah the moment you have it you will begin to talk kapita kapita ni kaje kaje ni kaje ni kaje ni ama kini kini aje bagi dah wanita bu kau dah sah jauh buka kau bading ya ni buat nama ada kamu yang jeban ni ya wah kini kaje aje mau mayara wanita bu ya wah kau wah ya bitcoin karya samu account tak kaji Hai kan? Aku ada daily seven, aku ada weekly seven, aku ada kuma monthly seven. Kau macam dah nak dah cikgu? You started planning towards the coming out of that child. Whether that girl, that that child will be a boy or a girl. You you you. Kita ini Allah ya Allah berkat cik. Do you begin to plan? Begin to plan towards the upliftment of that child. Ah, we we just our minimum balance of our that account is just three thousand naira. Ako wanera na tiza sa mevo. Ako wanera na from Monday to Friday. Muna wure. Muna zua na na chicken kaswa na jira muna zinda kuna business na masam dinga zua. Eh? Yeah, wa. Yeah, will be ro. That's very good. Who is Will Bero? You can open it. Kaya kabude. What if you are not in Mongo? Eh? What if you are not? Kasa mi mo atu doa boko sana. Muna nang tu duko ina aplato set. Kusa yinda branches na muzi kei. Muna nana Mongo. Muna shenda. Muna shimangar. Muna mikang. Azonan kuwa muna nang. Muna haipang. Muna jos. Muna jingir. Jinga baringe nang. Akwai wani me biang kuma? Eh? Akwai wani wana zai biang kuma? Eh? 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 Okay. Yeah, Mr. Jidona is a master of his craft. But to actually convince people to get into microfinance, it takes more than a dynamic performance. Some people see the microfinance sector as Wonders Bank. As we, if we are deceiving them to collect their cash and go and eat. Some years back, one of these wonder banks robbed many people of their hard-earned savings. The fraudsters went by the name Fadama. It is quite a common name also used by respectable projects. But in Plato State, the Fadama Wonder Bank deceived so many people that the name actually turned into a byword for fraudulent banking. Oh, Fadama, yeah. Mobile microfinance bank. Kunde ba? Kuna zaba? Yena dakio ako. Kunde ga mobile microfinance bank. We are separate. Ah, mo. Mo ba mo da wani relationship da Fadama. Mo ba mo da wani relationship. Ah. Tomo mo na boko skin zan head kwa tena mo amangu. Na mobile microfinance bank. Magala alete. Ana ba wankari ya futo inkari shen. Tomo tomo mo ba ana ba wankari. Wanda sun test. Sasa Fadama ki. To be successful in the long run, the banker needs to overcome deep-rooted fears. When you are trusted, your business will flourish. But once your clients begin to doubt you, that's where your business will begin to go down. If I say I'm coming, I will make sure I plan for it. I cannot fail. Mungu is the home place of the Mugavul Microfinance Bank. Jidona reports to the bank's headquarters at the end of every week. The banker started as a money collector in 2011. He was promoted to a cashier before he became the head of the customers' meeting point in Bokos. I want to appreciate the bank for training me. I've been going for, for many trainings. You have really tried, and uh, we hope that by next quarter, we will, we will be more than this. With over 36,000 clients, the Mugavul Bank is a well-established microfinance institution. When the bank started more than 20 years ago as a unit microfinance bank, it only had eight staff members. Today, Mugavul is a state-licensed microfinance bank with a second branch 
and six customer meeting points across the plateau. The number of staff has grown to 54. Every Monday morning, workers and management come together. The meetings are used to address administrative issues and also to increase knowledge about microfinance principles within the staff. Without researching, without reading, you cannot deliver. And so we give them topics that they can read and come and present to other staff here in the morning. Every Monday we do that. Simon Lawal Argo is the managing director. He values well-trained staff as a key element for success. Our mission is to, to become self-sufficient by mobilizing available resources to empower the people at the grassroots for a sustainable economic development and to ensure shareholders' wealth. The mission contains two aspects every microfinance bank should strive for. One, empower people at the grassroots, and two, ensure shareholders' wealth. The obligation to be profitable meets a social responsibility. A microfinance bank can only be truly successful when it manages to create opportunities for those without access to regular banking services. A key element to achieve this is a board committed to empower the community. What motivated us as board members is to serve the people. With those on the board, you don't take loan. If you want to take loan, you don't take loan as a member of the board. You have to take loan as a businessman, as a customer of the bank, and you must follow due process. The traditional ruler and board chairman, Chief John Putman Hirse, understands the value of credibility. Happy also to say that because of the relationship with us, management and the customers, the people believe in us. And they, because of that, we keep on getting more customers. They know that this bank has come to stay. Mr. Ishaku, the marketing manager, is out to meet one of those customers who came to believe in the bank. Good morning, Mr. Femi. Good morning, Mr. How are you? You're welcome. Femi is not originally from Mungu. After schooling in Lagos, he was posted here for his national youth service. That was when he discovered that the access to computer technology was very poor. He started to import spare parts, repair computers, and teach IT skills. The business grew and developed into this hardware shop. The contact with the microfinance bank came about with the idea of an actual computer training center. He said you need computers, you know, to train them, because practical training is better than theoretical. So I was a bit careful, and I gave him a little amount of money, which was uh, around 60000 Femi's idea met fertile ground. You know, Mangul government uh, is an educational local government. They, they, they want to acquire knowledge. So people started dropping in, dropping in. And uh, being a business-oriented person, he got the money and paid back within the shortest period of time. With the first loan, Femi bought a set of computer. A second loan helped him to buy a generator. With the third loan, he acquired land to build a bigger school. Up until today, he has gone through seven loans, each time with higher amounts. We started with just one PC, one computer. Yes, and presently, we have 84 functional computers. So yearly, approximately, we train 250 students. The world now is all about computer. Things are being modernized, and if you don't know how to use computer, you can't do anything. Magavo Microfinance Bank played a very important role in the business in terms of financing. If you have the idea, you have the vision, so you need finance to put the vision, to bring it into reality. And when you have the vision, you must have a plan, a, a detailed plan on how it can be actualized. Yes, so, and um, also integrity is a very key important asset if I'm not a man of integrity, I don't think the bank would have um, assisted to this level. So you see, when they give us finance, they give us loan money for, to finance the business, as we make the income, we also remit back to them. So you see, it keeps the, the relationship. Apart from the loan repayments, the bank benefited from Femi also in a different way. 
he was a person that came and you know uh, train all the staff and that is the beginning of our knowledge in computer uh, knowledge even mr ishaku himself learned a few things my challenge was a micro excel so at the beginning when he was teaching us excel i was thinking that it was a miracle Femi has already plans for further expansion and Mr. Ishaku is ready to listen to him. So once uh, you're coming in for lessons, you're coming through the site. Okay, and uh, this is just the ground floor and was also having the same hall like this up also. The story of the young IT entrepreneur is one example how microfinance can do both. Generate income for shareholders and create development for the community. He is a Dangute of our time. Yes. So basically, this is a filling machine. You have a rough surface in here. As it keeps on scratching, it keeps on revealing the food, the, the good contents inside the potato. So I do it like this, and then I easily flush the Irish potato out. Spoon of the salt, table salt, I apply into this. And then, Here is where the farm group in Bokos is testing how to turn their potatoes into chips. All machines are developed and constructed by Isaac's own son, Jerry. They are prototypes for experimental purposes. Once Jerry comes up with an ideal solution, the farm group will invest in a facility which meets hygienic standards for food processing. So I came up with one idea to use uh, a waste oil burner. So uh, this the design actually as I was doing. So it's going to be blowing wind and then to come out here and then be powering it into that place. So it's going to be fixed here. The house I always say a good thing sells itself. So you don't need to continue convincing somebody. The test on its own should be able to convince any buyer or any consumer. So definitely we'll have to do a serious homework on the test. I just noticed some of them are not well fried. Um, I think it's because of the oil, or what do you think? I say everybody is free to choose what he wants to learn, but not knowing that his own engineering could also come and help me, and it has already elevated my farm work. We have even fabricated a prototype uh, shelling machine. The mess that would take three, four, five days or one week, threshing it, in fact, would take less than two hours to thresh it now. So we just connect it to the source of power and it will shell it. The cops will go somewhere, then the mess will, grains will go somewhere. The chaff will also be going in one part and we just use the bags to fetch it. So that technology has also helped me. Need is the mother of innovation. I happen to be born in a farming family. When I see the, uh, the, the, the steps and the, how much we labor, how much we we put our physical strength into the work. So I have always, every hour, every second, calculating how I could make things better, how I could make some machines that could aid in doing the work. Driven by the desire to make a change, Jerry engineered a lot of things to make farm work easier. From simple things like a durable bucket to fetch water for irrigation farming to a unique cassava grinder. I think this is the only machine so far in Nigeria that mills cassava in its size, the whole size. It has hammers, it's just like slapping you, you know? And then it keeps on breaking it into smaller particles. Then it has a blower in here that blows the air. You can, you can see the distance it will have to travel. So if it's not milled to that fine particles, you know, definitely it won't be able to move up. It will definitely come back and then be milled again till the wind, till the air is able to blow it out. As much as the young man of 22 years has already done in the field of mechanizing farm work, Jerry's real passion is focused on something else. 
So this is just it. I, I believe you could, you could see it. This is the front of the car, well streamlined. The air passes from it. It's more of a sports car, you know. And it's going to have its radiators right beside it here. It will have 19 rims in front and 21 rims behind. This car, idea it's gonna be real fast, real strong. Nigerians will love this car. Watch out for it. He wants to build the first Nigerian car. Some years back, he constructed a prototype. I made this car, I call it my baby. I can put the gear and remove the gears from here. So this is the steering. It had a little seat here. I sat on it and I drove it just like a normal car. Jerry had the opportunity to increase his knowledge in engineering, studying one year abroad in the UK. So I was in the University of Hertfordshire, studying engineering there. I got some funds from my family. We saved at the expense of other things we ha we supposed to have done. I also got some funds from machines that I made for people. It has always been clear for Jerry that he wasn't going to stay in England. I was always asking myself, what is it that they have that we can't have too? If actually I end up being there, it's just to learn for a short time, come back and develop my own home country. So once kids hear a little sound out of this workshop or they just notice my presence in the workshop, they always troop in and they always come to me trying to learn one or two things. Anything they see me doing, they try and they, 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 turn, they ask questions. I have a belief that one day with such characters will make the country real good, will grow. Back in the destroyed village in Rio, the earth blocks have dried. Young and old join in the work to rebuild the community. My name is Suna Dala Sunday. I've been the Yafaru Anan, Chakaran the Yashige, Watan Hudu, Kamin Muhankara, Semufaradin Harbi, the Ganan, the Ganan Kuma, Ungamfula Nisun, Fito the Harbi, Nang Anna Harbi, Nang Anna the Harbi, Ankaji Mana Mutani, Wada Sunke, Guda Uku. Sunana and Manya now kill his own my Takama de Iko Allah. A young de Naki so a do in the Naki Tafia and Samu Burtalion de J. Kaini in the Naki so the Kuma in the Jenny Kio, Dominda Bobby, Sukan so Suchiawa Anang, in one Nanchiawa Yakare, Kadawa Masu in the Eke de Chiawa, Sujidat Ika Mayan de Kaikaki son Kajidat Ira Yanka. To Alhamdulillah, Sanuna, in the Suka Kwana, Sunji Dati, to Nina Kwana, Ajin Dati Kena. Sabo Dani, in the Samuri, in the Naiki, or Nakwana, our Shegari, Nitasa, in Chide Yalina, in Shada Yalina, Kuma, say Mukama Hanya, one day Jemuji Dat interfere. Doming Yande Kake, Dama, Akwe Burtali, Kat Aoko Hanya, Jeka Joka Shige. Say Kasamu, Manoma, Yari Gaya Noma, or Nauri, Tobay and the Zakai, Kumabay and the Jaka Iakoma, the Baya, Kumakana Hange, Daganang in Casella, Kion Nauri, Jeka Kama, Onihanya, Kuma, Kashige, Kena, Akan Noma, Uri, Ea, Kakan Shige, Toshikuma in by Che, a Kashige by Imbay Daba, Seri Gima Yatashi. In the past, there has always been uh, an altercation between full and herdsmen and sedentary farmers that I give. The cattle will go off, will veer off and go into someone's farm and they will destroy the farm and then the farmers would complain. But in the past it has always been at a latent stage. Uh, that means look, it happens and then there are, there are discussions, there are people who intervene and then compensations are made and it doesn't have to go into violence. But within the last 10 years we've seen a systematic, some, something close to a systematic uh, uh, trajectory of violence between these two sort of people. Uh, sedentary farmers always clashing with 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 Fulanese over grazing areas and grazing fields, or even over water resources or over land itself. 
this is a very serious problem because of the consequences and, and how devastating it has been for communities that are isolated from the metropolis. Uh, Shakalumbaya 2000, da muna zamamu na lafia batele de la wuni da muaba. Amanda Mukashiga 2002, sumfara azua suna kune kune nang, yenzu kune kune nana ukukena, awana anguang. So, diga 2002, ayu kune kune dinan, todanga ntaka muda sugeskia, ba muda wuni yadada juna musaka ni muba domin, haka nde muna nantepia atale de su, muna geswa, ama kwa ena geswa, Mr. Joseph Lengman is the director of the newly established Plateau State Peace Building Agency. The creation of the institution shows that the state government is taking up its responsibility to mediate the conflict. Now, this is the first step or the first time that the state government would take this uh, bold step in establishing or developing an institutional framework to ensure conflict prevention and also to lay the groundwork for building peace. Uh, amongst people who have fought in the past. Naki song Nkura Gonatin Tarea Zua Gonatin Jar Plato Iasamu Manyang Sara Kuna the Kuma Hardo Imu Kungya Mieti Allah. Yasamesu Suzo Suimana a Magana Akayande Muke Kio da Musoma bi a chicken manoma kuma susoma bi tare de my ongo insu naga hakaje fimamu kwenchang hankali asamu burtali asamu joma lafia tare de makiaya de manoma. Patching up the wounds of the past will not be done overnight, but the people of Plato are longing for peace. Even Sunday is ready to restore broken friendships. <laughs> tunani na cewa mu zamna lafiya duk waran su abubuwan da sun faru a abere sun riga sun faru mu samu cike kin zama lafiya yadda zamu ci gaba da ambutan da dama mun sab mun samu a hannu iyaye mu In the city of Jos, another meeting is taking place. Mr. Shipi, the chairman of the Solanum Potato Association, and Jerry, the young engineer from Bokos, are invited to be among the first to join a new IT platform. I'll first of all start by congratulating everybody who is here because, to be honest, uh, we feel we are making history by starting this. Nasir Yamama is the founder of the IT company developing the platform. He and his team want to use mobile technology to change the way farm business is being done in Nigeria. So a typical agricultural value chain involves not only the farmer but uh, many other stakeholders from the farm input uh, providers to the financial institutions, including buyers who are the market. They need to share information because information is what links them together in the first place. You have to speak to someone to know if they have the produce you want or if the produce that they have satisfies your requirement. So we're just lifting that physical world communication and enabling it using mobile technologies. That's what SME line does. Let's have a closer look at this SME line. So apart from the farmer himself, many other people are involved in the business of farming. There are, for example, input dealers supplying fertilizer and fungicides, market associations holding information about local crop prices, transporters and export agents moving goods from one place to another, people with storage and cooling facilities, workers doing specialized tasks such as plowing or harvesting, processing companies transforming the raw material into processed food, supermarket chains with high demand for fresh supply, microfinance banks providing financial services, extension offices with the interest to improve conditions for farmers. The SME line is connecting all these people Everyone can post and access information about services, prices, demands, weather information, new products, new farming methods, and so on. Every link in the network can develop its own dynamic. Let's, for example, look at the link between farmers and extension officers. 
When a farmer encounters a new disease on his farm and he doesn't know what to do, he can use the inbuilt camera in his phone to take a picture and upload it to the SME line. An extension officer evaluates the picture and gives immediate advice on how to go about the problem. SME stands for small and medium enterprises, indicating that this technology could in future also connect people in other business sectors apart from farming. The SME line works through simple text messages, no internet connection needed. User register to the platform by sending a message with a certain code, similar to the way how to recharge airtime. Other codes are used to navigate through the different functions. Information from the network also comes back to the user in form of a text message. To reach out to everybody, the developers included a function that allows information to be sent as voice messages in different languages. You can get the response and replies in house app or in English for now. With only the first batch of farmers registering, the network is still in a very early stage. The platform itself is just an empty vessel. To unlock its great potential, all stakeholders need to embrace the new technology, generate content, and bring it to life. There are so many of the new technologies upcoming now that our parents don't know about it. Each parent will believe in his son or his child more compared to someone coming from outside. So I believe the major role we have to play is letting our parents know that it actually works. It's for real. You just put a star. You know where to get the star, right? Mm -hmm. You it's press there. this number there. and then you see it here. Mm -hmm. If this thing is workable, we will be able to get our inputs at the right time and get it at the right, uh, with the right price. And then even if there is disease infestation, we get solution to our problems immediately. Definitely will increase uh, the output of the farmer and will increase productivity. But the only problem I may envisage is the workability of this. If these uh, information or data are going to be gotten from the indigenous farmers, some farmers may only give information to please themselves. Apart from his reservations about user-generated data, Isaac predicts that there will be a deadline to implement the SME line. If we wait too long, we get discouraged and we might decide to put off some of the things that we are anticipating along the line. We're working on this. So, that is where we got the money to educate you people from. Hi, thank you. God bless you. <laughs> a much anticipated day has come for the men in Bokos. They join the potatoes from the storehouse with fresh supplies from other farm groups. We thank God for bringing us to today. This is a journey we have been expecting. We are taking off from Kunet Bara. By the grace of God, we are going down to Abuja. We are making a move. We are changing the statue quo. The moment of joy is suddenly interrupted. What happened is just very funny. Because uh, the policemen were uh, they are forgetting the right thing to do, and they are doing the opposite. So they are, they are just asking unnecessary questions. All what they are looking for was just money. This kind of unjustified revenue collection is a real problem for trade within the country. It considerably increases the price of transport. But this being the first time Isaac delivers the fruit of his labor to the capital city, nothing can spoil his mood. I don't know how I will start this because I am overjoyous for seeing myself in this particular uh, condition. ShopRite is Africa's largest food retailer with more than 2,000 outlets in 15 countries across the continent. We have a whole lot of demands now 
from our consumers, from our customers. They have come to welcome these potatoes coming from the local farmers, coming from our country, coming from our own soil. So we want to be able to meet their demands. I want to tell them whatever they are doing that is making them produce more, they should please try and put more effort. The potatoes from Bokos are not only sold inside the shop. This truck came here with food imports from Lagos. It used to drive back empty, but this time, it is loaded with potatoes from Plateau to be distributed all over the country. Please, I don't know, where do you actually got this supply of potato from? A local, okay. yeah, from local supply within, okay. the within the country. Okay, yeah. it's nice. You know, this because especially the, as the price is affordable. Okay, can yes, they can buy it. Okay, do you know why I'm asking? Because uh, I have seen the potato like this one, the, uh, the potatoes have just supplied. Oh, okay. So, and uh, these things are. Are produced through my cooperative. Isaac, Mr. Bewa, Madame Florence, and all the others you met show that it is possible to make a change. Obstacles are ahead and peace is not yet stabilized. But one thing is for sure, Plateau is on the move. To make sure it keeps moving in the right direction, you can also play your part. Whatever it is you do, get organized, plan very well, and put your own footprint on this beautiful land.